All right, after a struggle and a push, I had to move the camera because literally it was in my way all the time. And what I'll show you is I've put some oil, uh, some gasket sealant on the face along here, all the way around, just to make sure I get a good seal. And what we do now is we just push our cylinder back home. That's home. And we're after top dead center in a minute when we put our, <clears throat> our uh, flywheel and stator back in because we need to know where top dead center is and it's e the easiest place to do it is when you're looking at it just making sure that's going up and down the bore okay yeah no problem there is a, a little bit of three and one oil that I put in there. <clears throat> Again, just give that a clean. Never hurts to be cleanly or clean. And uh, when we get the fly, we will put on stator plate back on. And I'll put it out of its. Uh, flywheel good magnetism on that right what I just need to do as well is uh, just give it a bit of a, a spray down clean and uh, put our cables through which go through here the hole which I've uh, taken the opportunity when I cleaned up the mag housing just to uh, deburr all of that So there so we don't pinch our cables so it turns freely right, we should have a few bolts in here and that beast remember now they were using that as a washer hence the markings on it so let me get my uh, ratchet just take that off again I always follow the inner chenty and put the bridge it across but it wasn't done like that so again right so we've got our washer that I couldn't find because obviously I put it on there and we just stick our bolts in they're always a bit hard to push in because of the um, the gasket Basically, uh, I've never had one where the whole, you know, where the bolts push straight in like that. And what we're doing is we're just doing it up so it's nipped so I can turn that. That one. Again, you have to push it in to get it started. <clears throat> And then what we need is our last one in there. Again, I'm going to need to push that to get that started. There we go. Doesn't take a lot. <clears throat> That's what I'm looking for. My screwdriver attachment again. And I've knocked the M6 down. So let's just tighten that in by hand at the moment. I've got plenty of them nuts anyway and that was a new one so we just want to make sure that that turns freely and we're not catching our cables. 
yeah, so our cables are not being caught. There's a pinch point there and they can quite easily get caught. Judging by how it was and the markings, that is where the stator plate was. So I'm just going to tighten that down um, for the moment. And uh, I'll just get another end. Oh, I can see it. And that just goes on there and pinches our cable out the way so that doesn't get destroyed by the uh, the rotor the flywheel um, make sure that's around the right way which it's not and again tighten that up hand tight first and we can stick that on our ratchet again I'm pretty confident that that is that's where it was before because I can still see the the marks you can scribe it if you want to if you're not if you haven't got a timing disc or whatever and then we can just tighten that one up again and tighten these up they don't again you know don't over tighten bear in mind you're going into uh, the engine casing you don't want to strip anything on that that's tight enough and so is that and I just want to make sure that the flywheel hasn't picked up any iron filings which it has done so I'm just gonna to have to clean that off and obviously that's got dust in it from, from bits and bobs from my hands but, uh, Give them a wipe. This pickup, the K2 pickup, dates back to the first electronics years and years ago and become standard fare. And just after the screws on, let's get there now. Nice, even better. And what I'm doing is I'm just picking off any bits of metal and bear in mind they might be magnetized that's clean that's got a tad on there so I'm just going around cleaning off the edges making sure there's nothing bad that can get stuck I'm not sure what's uh, they they spray like laminate on it. And I'm not sure what's laminate and what's metal because it just looks the same under um, LED lighting. But uh, in there is the trigger point. When the two magnets are in midpoint, that lines up with the K2 and tells it to to uh, fire. So I'm just going to move the cable out of the way and stick on our flywheel. Just loosely tighten that up. That's not it. Um, that's the beast. No, it's not. That's the beast. And Bear in mind that's a left-handed thread, so it's undue to tighten up. I'm not overly tightening this at the moment. Because what I'm doing is, if I push that back on, 
that mark is top dead centre and that is just before top dead centre so that's, that's quite easy to uh, see where they've set the timing on this so I can just tighten that up and I'm going to need the, uh, the extractor tool again so I don't think that will just pull off with my hands oh it has that's unbelievable I know it's not tight but um, at least I know where the markings are now that's why I didn't want that to drop on the floor oh, I'm just going to pull this off what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to clean the uh, all the where the uh, petrol's gone down come on come off the bloody magnetism is unbelievable on this flywheel that's what all that's holding it is magnetism right, let's shift that stuff out of the way and I'll get my trusty disc and that is set to Eighteen. I'm not going to move that. I'll leave that at eighteen. <laughs> what you're doing is you're moving the stator in relation to the firing point. So um, I probably can't see this, but there's a little mark there. You can put a bit of white paint if you want. And that corresponds to that white line on there. Firing point. I just want to uh, again use a bit of cleaner on this. I have actually got a, a cleaner under the desk there, but. Uh, it's uh, it's a rigmarole to set it up and leave stuff cleaning in it. So I'm going to switch off for a bit while I clean this up. Right, I've just cleaned up the cylinder head. I, again, I've not gone mad on it. It's not really badly dirty. And I've put a new um, high compression gasket on the head so we just have to play with this a little bit because if you remember it was a bit of a pain getting it on previously or off I should say but it does fit when you get the hole lined up that's it and I just need to swing that around again off the exhaust just get them lined up as far as I can remember I know it was uh, it came off a lot easier than I expected it because I was starting if you remember watching the uh, the video if you did watch the previous videos it's uh, that's it and just make sure it kicks over then what we need to do is just put our head bolts back on and again you can torque them up if you want um, they are on there actually one excellent I haven't tightened up the flywheel yet the flywheel nut I should say there's uh, no reason for that other than um, it's just I want to get this cylinder head on before the um, the gasket uh, sealant goes off. Uh, how many have I got out? One, two, I'm after another one. There she is. And that one. So these are normal 
and again numbers to you letters to you I can't remember if they're a 13 or a 14 but we'll soon find out this bottom one here is the long one for the cowling But they, they uh, whoever put these on, put these on back to front from what I do. So I'm going to have to turn these nuts around because the uh, where they've been running on the um, the washers, it's uh, yeah, no big deal. It's just something I like doing, and if uh, you think it's good, then you know obviously follow my lead. Um, That one was the right way around actually, but that one definitely isn't because I can see where it's been on the washer. And then what we need to do is get our socket in there, should be on here somewhere, a 13, is that it? Well, first time, wow. And again we're only going to loosely do these up. So this one's turned. That one's just tight. Got resistance on it. Go up on here next. Got all the way from there, shouldn't I? Yeah, whatever. just got resistance on it and now I've got to do this one in the bottom all that is is my finger or the nuts too loose it'll just come back with a ratchet And then all we want again is this just to pinch up. Yeah, just going to kick it, make sure it kicks all right. Yeah, that's fine. So, what I'm going to do is one, two, three, four. So, give them a half a turn. actually because I've got the spark plug out so that's fine that's fine that's fine and of course the camera's in the way there but that's fine you can talk these up um, again I do a lot of the stuff by feel but um years and years ago you know the average person didn't have a torque wrench so uh their their limit was you know tighten a little bit more which is uh kept me in good stead over these years and then if you remember we just put this on and it fit the engine and just turn it a bit and it pulls us a tad so what I'm doing now is I'm going to put the, the little screws in first 
just loosely top and bottom one in and just, this one I hate doing because it's uh, a sod with the um, with the exhaust in place uh, let's wait and see where my long bits are in fact the camera couldn't be in a worse place I'll just shift you a bit because I just need to get above there and just get that in the hole and just start it off doing everything but line up believe it or not there we go in so I'm just gonna give that a couple of turns and go and that top one That's it. and we've got our thirteen mil from there And what I do now is I tighten up the 13mm next. And then these two just guide in on it. Um, this already came with the engine. I caught it that time. I'm not uh, going to go out of battery today. So uh, what I was saying was I tightened this one first. And then these ones come up on it and this cut out here was done by me this was already in um, by the previous owner so <clears throat> not sure why it was cut so big because you could have that right the way up this is the cool part of the engine anyway so you really want the the exhaust to be blown out here you know the cold air to go towards the bottom and um, you normally find that if a scooter has been um, seized it's normally either side of the um, the two ports or three if you've got three normally the two bottom or side ones and the exhaust port it tends always to seize the exhaust port because that is the hottest spot that you've got in the engine that is because obviously all your um uh, all your burnt fuels going out there with your exhaust which is uh, quite hot I don't know exactly how hot I would imagine over 600 degrees but uh, yeah it's hot enough so all I'm going to do now is just tighten these up bottom one can't put on the other cowling yet because uh, I've got to tighten up that bolt yet but what I'm going to do is uh, just to top this video up I'm just going to stick the exhaust back on again and the spark plug in so what I'm going to do now is just get my ratchet small ratchet and just tighten these that's tight and so is that that's perfect that one's already tight so uh, we're in business can try that anyway with the yeah it's rock solid so I have got a torque wrench as you know but uh, with things like cylinder heads that's kicking over all right. I'm, I'm leaning forward kicking it and as you know we already done the mod on this engine so uh, I'm just going to clean up the spark plug with some uh, spray again and I'll find what I've done with it I can stick that back in Now it won't be so easy to kick over now. Spark 
plug spanner should be here. That's it. That's wiped again. I'm going to give all these cowlings a wipe down before it goes back in. But um, still a bit of that gung gum on that. It's stainless steel, so you can polish out any scratches that you've got. Just taken off the gung gum and then take off the gung gum off the, uh, the exhaust here. It's got fiberglass in it and uh, what it basically does is it just seals your exhaust. I always use it on all my exhausts. It does make it a pig to get off but you know you've not got pools of oil on the floor from a leaking exhaust there's nothing worse. I mean that is really, you know, the top end's um, Viton seals are in now aren't they? So um, what I'm going to do is I will do a compression test when I fired it up in my frame. The last engine I built is in my uh, GP at the moment and uh, I'm going to take that out. It was only ever put in there while this was out. And to give it somewhere because I haven't got a, a, I don't think you can start it with this but I suppose you could bolt it to the floor put some anchor bolts in and kick it over from here and run it off of this but uh, you know it's not ideal far from being ideal I've just cleaned off the rest of the edge of this and then I've got the exhaust to go on uh, the clamp which I'll need to clean up it's a good thing with the stainless steel I can actually see where I'm cleaning I think you've probably got a better view than I have but I can actually see it on there. And I can notice that that bit there, they still got it on. I just want it so it's, uh, it's clean enough to uh, use. And like I say, I'm not sure if it goes off. Uh, you might have an expert out there can advise us. That'll be fine. I'm just wiping inside there now. And I could go uh, over this again with the uh, the wet and dry but there's no real reason to oh, we need to put that on uh, yeah that way will do although if I put it that way if I need to take it off I can get to the bolt so I've got the the bolt in on the bottom um, that way around and uh, I'm just going to stop this for a second and move the engine around <laughs> 